Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey, your host. Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm excited to have you here. Well, it's getting closer and closer each week to year end and it's exciting as we start to move forward and implement any of the plans and strategies that we are uh, have been incorporating for the last uh, four or five weeks. Uh, we started this process on our, on our channel on the first week of October. So we're about six weeks into our plan and our strategy. Uh, certainly from my standpoint, uh, we've already begun to and finished up getting our lead gifts for our matching uh, gift challenge that uh, opportunity we'll put out there with uh, all of our of our lists so we've gotten lead gifts already and are now moving to the phase of of um, asking people from the masses to give at year end and so that's always an exciting opportunity uh, and uh, they've things have gone out to the post office and uh, that uh, the matching gift opportunity will be presented in that letter. So it's exciting to see that combined with email marketing and uh, follow-up phone calls and then also leading into December and all that uh, entails with that. We've got uh, about five more weeks of videos that will be between now and December 31st, so I'm excited to be able to present those opportunities as well. We've got seven videos in the can right now, and so I am I really hope that you're going out to each individual video and uh, that you're also watching the year-end playlist. If uh, you haven't yet taken advantage of all those videos in the year-end playlist, please click the link up above where I've put the playlist out there. And if you haven't subscribed, we would love to have you as part of this community, of this family of leaders who are trying to work as hard as we can to increase our income and become fully funded. So let's dive right into our first question for Jim and Java today. Our first question is from Kay in Culpeper, Virginia. And Kay asks, is it important to report on year-end results and how should we do that? Well, Kay, it's always important for us and, and in every one of my videos in the past and certainly uh, as we move to the future, I've addressed the whole importance of just reporting on results and reporting on outcomes that I believe that outcomes are some of the most important things to our donors. And just as investors are looking at their portfolio, checking the Wall Street Journal, wanting to find out exactly how their investments are paying off, I believe there's a lot of our partners who are really looking at things exactly the same way. They want to know how their gifts their investments of resources are paying off and what's the outcome. Now, they may not be looking at it at the same level of frequency as they do their financial investment portfolio, but they are interested in those kinds of things. They want to know what's happened. And for so many of our donors, the idea of making a difference in the world um, for our individuals of faith, they're interested in making a difference in eternity. And in both cases, they want to make a difference in the lives of individuals. Whether that be one life or many lives, they're interested in making a difference in the lives of individuals. So it really is important that we focus in on giving them the numbers, giving them the stats, and especially giving them examples uh, as, uh, of lives that are changed as a result. Remember the old adage that I've said many times, people give to people, justified by the cause. So in other words, they may not be as excited overall about the organization. They might not be as passionate as you are about your organization, but they can be equally as passionate about the individuals whose lives are changed. That's why it's so important to give them as much information as you possibly can about that life that's changed, that person from your audience who maybe was taken out of human trafficking or who now in a village has clean water or someone who has a, a, a pair of shoes that they've never had before or a homeless person who has a meal uh, at Thanksgiving or at Christmas and use names whenever possible and, and use faces. I've mentioned that many times, but I understand in so many cases it has to be confidential, it has to be 
private and so you know you may use a, a pseudonym for that person or may just use a first name uh, many times we aren't using last names but uh, from the standpoint of even pictures uh, using an alternate picture or maybe uh, a line across the eyes of someone from a third world country middle eastern country east asian country all those kinds of things are important but it's still even with those things it still allows for the connection so I believe it is so important to report on things. Now, the mistake that I think too many organizations make is that they overwhelm people with numbers. Remember that in most households, I find that there are emotional givers and there are logical givers. And you want to make sure that you provide the information for both the emotional giver and the logical giver. The emotional giver is going to get very excited by those personal stories. The logical giver, they want to know the numbers, the stats, how many people were fed at your homeless shelter as a result of our money. If, uh, if you're providing shoes to a village or fresh water to a village, uh, what, how many in that village, how many people were impacted as a result of that? All those things are so important to the logical giver. And sometimes even the emotional logical giver can come out and manifest itself as, as a single person. So in other words, someone may think logically about their decision, but give emotionally so that they may get impacted, may get touched as a result of that emotional. So you need to take all those kinds of things into consideration. But when we're talking about collecting our data and our stats, giving people too much data is just as important as not giving people enough information. So I believe it's important to find three or four or possibly five key indicators about your organization. If you are a organization or a person of faith reaching other individuals uh, and funded by donors of faith, you might, uh, the, the indicator you might have might be number of people exposed to the gospel. Then the next indicator might be the number of people who came to Christ, made a profession of faith as a result of this. You might also have how many people are involved in your effort or involved in your movement. Those may be some of the key indicators, and it might also be important to know how many movements. If you're a rescue mission, how many people walked in the door over a month period of time? How many people were fed as a result of that? It could also include how many people were exposed to the gospel with that. If you are a human trafficking organization, one that combats human trafficking, how many individuals, how many women were taken out of human trafficking, sex slavery as a result of your efforts. And if you may house or shelter or protect those women, how many of those were impacted? So think about those key indicators. People don't need to know. Too often, we drill down so deeply that we go into how many paper clips and how many pencils we use. Our donors don't need to know those kinds of things. That really isn't important to those individuals. What's important to them are those key factors, those things that really made a difference. And frankly, it really does so often come down to change lives. Uh, even though we may be an organization that teaches and educates, uh, you've got to get to change lives. And again, be sure to, to sell the sizzle, not the steak. I've mentioned this so many times in our videos. Sell those things that are really exciting. Your organization may desperately need copiers or computers or video equipment. Don't focus in on those as those can be the stake. Focus in on what can happen if you have a video projector. If you have a camera that is 4K, you can take videos and and do training, educational videos, so that they can be brought out into the community to make a difference. If you do training videos, those are the things. Focus in on the outcome. And I believe outcomes can be found in so many different areas. Uh, outcomes can come from a copier or a computer. If it makes the process of facilitating individuals coming into your door, marketing, and, and getting more people, allowing you to, to serve more people, that is your ultimate outcome. So always look for the outcome. I've used the example over the years 
of in the 1980s. Uh, I helped to fund a conference center and the individuals who had to maintain the yards and the grounds at this conference center had to raise their own funding. You imagine how difficult it would be to have to raise money to tell people you cut grass, but it wasn't about the grass. It was about the people who came to the conference center, the lives that were dramatically changed as a result of those people coming to the conference center. And if that grass was three feet high, no one would come to that conference center. So those individuals paved the way and laid the groundwork for audiences to come to the conference center where lives were changed. When we could do that, when we weren't selling cutting grass, we were selling changed lives, people coming to the conference center. That's when that funding was totally revolutionized. Now, how do we get this message out? Uh, I would, especially at your end, I would encourage you to put it out in some of your earlier newsletters, beginning as early as late October, early November into middle November, and then sprinkle that throughout the year, certainly sprinkle the stories throughout the year. Uh, should you create an annual report? I've got a video about that, about creating annual reports that I'll put up above. I am not a big fan of doing annual reports just because the cost involved. If you want to do an annual highlights of key indicators and stories, I'm all for that. But putting in balance sheets and putting in your, uh, your budget in those things, many times those are not necessary. Should you make those available? If someone requests, yes, but I don't think you need to get that out there. It, it, it tends to really harden your message uh, when you're just giving people the facts and the bottom line about things. And plus, balance sheets can be misread sometimes, uh, misconstrued as far as return on investment. So make sure that if you're going to do anything that resembles an annual report, just focus in on a few key, key indicators um, and and then stories of changed lives related to that. So that's how I would recommend it. So, Kay, I hope that answered your question. I appreciate so much these questions. If you've got questions for the Jim and Java broadcast, you can always put those out on, on, on Twitter at devfstrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. We're on an Instagram at Dev Effectiveness Strategies, and you can always email me at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And remember, to be notified of these videos, you need to subscribe. And, and we really want to grow and expand this community of individuals who has our goal of increasing income and reaching that goal of becoming fully funded. So until next week, this is Jim Dempsey signing off, and we'll see you on the next episode of Jim and Java.